For those of you out there that don't know, Android Automotive is the next iteration of in-car entertainment that takes the common Android Auto and builds it out specifically for vehicles. And so yours truly has been lucky enough to spend some time getting to know the system and bring you some of our initial thoughts. Thanks for watching 9to5Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So if like me, you're trying to work out the differences, think of this as Android Auto leveled up and not simply shoehorned into the standard in-car head unit. There are some genuinely real changes here that take advantage of unique hardware of an admittedly limited number of vehicles that do have this new NOS installed upon them. Polestar is actually among the very first companies, including parent company Volvo, to bring a car to market with Android Automotive preloaded. And while a number of large legacy car makers are also going to be jumping on board over the coming years, with promises to adopt Google's in-car OS as their own, complete with modifications and tweaks suited to those upcoming vehicles in question. It really genuinely has been a long road to even get to this stage. You may remember that the very first glimpses of Android Automotive came back at Google's annual IO developer conference all the way back in 2019. And the biggest benefit of this early prototype version is that the OS has had time to receive refinements in these intervening years. And now finally we have admittedly some luxury cars shipping with it pre-installed and ready to wow you. So to put it succinctly, this is probably how Android Automotive should have been without certain limits and prerequisites. You don't genuinely need your phone to effectively mirror actions and functions within your car. Android Automotive is completely standalone, almost like a tablet dedicated to controlling the main functions of your vehicle, but with the added bonus of access to the Google Assistant and the Play Store suite of apps. Unfortunately, that is an oversimplification though of what Android Automotive is and what it can be provided vehicle manufacturers are willing to tailor the experience to their specific models. Polestar has decided to keep things fairly simple here and it doesn't take too long to get your head around where things are kept. Plus there are plenty of heads up notifications and pop-ups to inform you of the various connotations of your on-screen and voice commands. Here's my overriding feeling though after just a few days of driving and interacting with the system. It feels effortless compared to what is a mostly solid Android Auto solution. Being able to completely separate the system does bring advantages such as not necessarily needing to be tethered to your smartphone and it's therefore eligible for a greater expansion of updates and tuning among plenty of other benefits. This new in-car OS includes options for data connections, meaning that updates can be pushed directly to vehicles without the need for Wi-Fi, although of course the option is available to use Wi-Fi when it's nearby should you wish to do so. Tethering to your smartphone is also still available here too, which is another nice option and one of the reasons why I think this is such a flexible system. I'd be lying though if I said that the main head unit in the Polestar 2 that I happen to drive didn't feel a lot like a big Android tablet, but at least this is a good one. It's familiar enough that you can understand just what's going on at first glance and without much forethought. This is a major benefit over some of the in-car specific interfaces we've seen on car head units over the past few years. Being able to just navigate and find things without first having to pick up a manual really is excellent. And in the coming years, there will genuinely be people out there buying new vehicles that maybe have never picked up an Android device before. And so this is going to be something that helps aid that switch. Although if you do get lost, you can just use the actual digital manual provided the car is stationary. The initial setup process for Android Automotive, once you actually find the Play Store, if the car itself has already been preloaded, as I personally find out, is genuinely an absolute breeze. And there are a number of ways to connect your Google account, but in my own case, the most seamless way was to navigate directly to the Play Store on the head unit and just select to pair with your Android device. It's worth noting that this isn't technically the same as pairing directly to your phone. This just ties your Google account to the actual car system itself. A short pop-up should appear on your smartphone screen that will just walk you through the super quick procedure. I feel like this should probably be available right away and it actually might be, but in actual fact, you don't need to be signed in at all to use the systems in your car. If you don't sign in, then you will just have limited access to the Play Store and only the currently installed apps. But once this initial pairing or syncing process is finished, in theory, you may never need to use your phone in your car again. On top of that, you can pair directly to your smartphone too using Bluetooth to do the basics like read and reply to text messages and take calls. Personally, I'm not huge uh, a huge fan of this as I found it was an added distraction. Plus I do find it personally hard to hold a conversation while concentrating on the road and other vehicles on the road. Calls though, they are pretty seamless once paired and syncing your contacts directly with your car means you can just ask the assistant to initiate a call or even SMS 
because it has its own independent data connection. Once you get the hang of things, it's a clean and consistent experience at that. Now the killer application and something I hadn't anticipated ahead of time was the direct integration of the Google Assistant with the Polestar 2 and Android Automotive. And I'm not talking about these simple things like asking Google Maps for directions, which by 2021 standards is pretty basic for the Google Assistant, but very helpful, I must admit. Almost like a small integrated smart home ecosystem, you can control a huge portion of the in-car components just by using your voice. And the voice detection itself was borderline flawless with only a few times that I couldn't do things like tune the air conditioning settings or adjust the heated steering wheel temperature. Yes, you're hearing that correctly. The assistant can manage a wide array of in-car options and hardware, such as the temperature or the air conditioning, mapping, the audio volume, plus genuinely much more on top of that. The limits are potentially endless depending on how a car manufacturer sees fit and how it wants to integrate these things. Even knowing exactly as well what the Google Assistant is capable of, I still feel as though I've barely scratched the surface of what is possible with regular voice commands. One really nice bonus is that once you've linked your Google account, all of your existing Google Home connected tech is also just a voice command away. And this is really great if you're driving home and want to do something like switch the lights on before you arrive. Would I say it's totally necessary? Well, no, but it's still fun and sort of useful at the very same time. On top of that, I just had a lot of fun asking all sorts of random queries and questions, just as I would at home with my own smart displays and speakers. From the funny to the mundane, the Google Assistant wipes the floor with all other AI powered audio helpers, and I can easily foresee this providing hours upon hours of entertainment and maybe annoyance on long car journeys with friends and family, especially for the, those of you out there with young children. There is a potential stumbling block or wider issue here though, because of the usage of the Play Store and Android Automotive being a new platform. Developers are required to make their apps compatible with this new system. And at the moment, the selection of apps on the Play Store that you're probably used to with Android Auto is somewhat lacking here. I'd probably call the store a little empty in truth. Any apps that have yet to be optimized for Android Automotive have just been omitted from the Play Store. This makes a lot of sense, but let's hope that we get more applications as more car manufacturers seize upon the platform. My personal biggest bugbear though has been the severe lack of access to messaging apps such as Telegram and WhatsApp, but it's worth noting that regular SMS does work fine here with Google Messages. It's hard to find as well, but the Polestar 2 is also running Android 10 on that center console. Now this isn't instantly a negative, but it's unclear what the update procedure will be for specific vehicles moving forward. This does mean that apps developed for the system as is will need to target this older OS rather than the newest stable releases too. And I think this might compound the already quiet Play Store scenario, at least in the short term. That is until Android 11 and maybe Android 12 come to Android Automotive in the near future. Unlike your smartphone though, you can't do a whole heap of customization with just a four section grid being the main view or the main view pane that you'll have from the get go, at least on the Polestar. This probably isn't a huge deal as you don't necessarily want the distraction of things like home screen widgets and various icon packs taking your eyes from the road. It's simple, streamlined, and most importantly, functional. Luckily, this layout doesn't necessarily need to be adhered to either as this is a skinned version of Android Automotive after all. Polestar has chosen this layout, so we may see more visually appealing skins in the coming years as brands such as Volkswagen, Vauxhall, and more inject their own flavor on the platform itself. I'll say that the performance of Android Automotive has been fairly solid, even despite the fact that this car, the Polestar 2, is using what is 2016 computing hardware. The Intel Atom A3900 CPU is more than capable of running Android 10, and the Intel HD Graphics 500 can handle the graphical demands of slightly modified Android apps. I didn't notice any sluggish performance, but the actual amount of apps you can run really isn't that extensive to really push this system anyway. Any tinkerers out there hoping to sideload their favorite apps though will be left disappointed too. To my surprise, the developer mode is disabled on Android Automotive, although in hindsight, this is likely very important for car safety, especially if rogue apps could potentially access and control various physical in-car components, so it does make sense in the long term. I'll note that also because the car has its own data connection, some apps can load slowly. For example, apps like YouTube Music could sometimes hang or not connect when trying to access certain playlists. I put this down to a sloppy or poor data connection rather than the OS itself. The assistant also sometimes would take a little while to pull external queries and requests in the same manner. But this is again likely to the in-car connection rather than the system itself. 
And also on top of that, likely for safety reasons, certain features that come as part of the Polestar 2 will only work when the car itself is stationary. Some features will only work as well in specific scenarios, such as the 360 degree cameras when trying to park or maneuver in tight spaces. I found the in-car system handled the transition really well, and I completely understand why access in certain areas, such as the Play Store, are unavailable when the car is in transit. For those of you worrying about car security and access to your Google account, well, you can't access a great deal until the actual car key is within proximity or close proximity or vicinity of the car itself. That does bring about some element of confusion as to whether people could simply hop in and start messing around with your Google profile. But as I said, you can't access much beyond some synced contacts and the Play Store itself. Because there is a data connection independent of your smartphone, revoking access should remove the profile from your car if something were to happen though. That's not an outright solution, but I didn't have quite enough time to fully test this process or work out its current limitations. I mentioned the lack of apps a moment ago, and this is very important if you prefer using an alternative to Google Maps, such as Waze. Sadly, this isn't available at present, but we're sure it will arrive in much the same way Android Auto has opened up to third-party navigation just recently. There's no doubt that Google Maps is still a fine solution and integrates seamlessly with an EV, such as the Polestar 2. Neat little tweaks like showing just how much charge you have will have remaining when arriving at a destination is genuinely greatly appreciated. This is still Google Maps though, as you know it, it's just tweaked and tuned to better run on what is a new form factor. The actual dashboard includes a number of tweaks to integrate navigation with Google Maps right there in this heads up view too. This isn't exactly new uh, to cars per se, but it feels well integrated without causing too much distraction. It's not mandatory either. Pressing a button on the steering wheel just minimizes and shows car stats, while the massive display can show the route if you prefer that. I felt that having maps loaded on two displays felt a little bit redundant, but the larger panel does have more overall utility for scrolling and tapping at specific positions and locations on the map. I will say with certainty though that using maps to type out destinations seemed very finicky at times. I personally just found that using voice commands was easier and more consistently accurate. Gboard is installed here and it is a great addition to the car rather than some annoying third party option if you prefer typing to a destination or point of interest. An added safety feature though actually disables this at certain points while driving, but I couldn't replicate it every single time due to the obvious eyes on the road safety concerns that I had while testing it. So I gotta say, I didn't ever think that my car would potentially end up being powered by Android, but the future looks really bright for your next car. The Assistant plus Google Maps alone are a killer combo that tie everything together and the extension of these services into vehicles feels like the perfect next destination. I'm not particularly concerned about the app situation at this stage as, to be honest, I'm sure that the Android Automotive version of the Play Store will catch up as we see more and more production cars start to ship with their own skinned version of this OS. There really is a lot to get excited about because while Android Automotive is in its current incarnation, at heart does sometimes feel like a big tablet in your vehicle. The added integration with the world's biggest mobile OS and the best voice assistant on the market are game changing features. Being able to just solely focus on the road ahead while barking orders and controlling almost of the core areas of your car is something I'm already missing in my limited time away from my dumb car. For the time being, Android Automotive is limited to an array of vehicles that I wouldn't necessarily call affordable. There's no denying that, at least from a price perspective, cars like the Polestar 2 could be considered luxury vehicles. More legacy manufacturers have jumped on board, so hopefully we'll start to see more trickle down of this feature and Android Automotive, and maybe some interesting implementations over the coming years. Though bearing this deluge of information, it's an exciting time for the potential future of a world filled with Android powered cars. So that's Android Automotive in a pretty big nutshell. And I just want to ask you, have you tried it for yourself or do you have any questions about the system? Be sure to pop them down in the comment sections below and we'll do our utmost to answer as many as possible. But until next time, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I'll speak to you later.